Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today, it's just going to be a nice little simple. My work here is done, and today date the 18th of November 2021. Now, the reason why I've made this little plaque is most of my projects, for those that's been following me, and I appreciate you popping by and saying hello, they all go on my shed. And the idea was to complete the shed by the end of this year. So, 18th of November, for the last plaque to go on, I've done it in plenty of time. And it's been a bit of a challenge, and we've had some small projects to do. And I've also done bits and bobs in between. But the shed will be complete once this final 4.5 inch by 12 inch plaque goes on. So... This is the last one for the shed. I will be doing other projects, but as regards as the shed, my work here is done. So as always, we've got our little template done. I will just trace that out on tracing paper. I use a free app, fancy letterings on phone. I literally just picked one of these fonts that I wanted and blew it up to the size. I actually traced this off my phone, believe it or not, because that was big enough lettering. Blew it up on the phone. Put the tracing paper over the top and let's just draw around it with a pencil. And then we stick it to the wood, mark off where we want to it so it's somewhere near enough. I use good old carbon paper. And we just, just pop that underneath like that. And then go over it again with a pen. I prefer to use a pen just so it stands out against the pencil. And once you've done it all, you can just remove that. And that's our nice little simple, simple plaque for today's little project. Like I say, you can see we've marked it off. Look, we put lines here. So we get some kind of spacing. Take your time. This is actually decking wood today. Just normal, normal decking wood. And it's been stood for a year or two. And I literally routed off the section at the back. I can just show you a piece quickly. I do believe I've got one here. That's original decking wood. With the grooves on the back. And the smooth on the other side. And like I say, all I've literally done is routed off the grooves. I've done plaques where I've left that groove on. And stuck that on the fence like that no problem it's just a little bit chunky but normally i use fencing wood so today nice decking wood so that's ready to go as always for me cnc bits for the lines these come in different degrees i've actually got one in there now as you can see i believe that's a 20 degree are we going to focus there we go these are ideal for doing your lines there is different bits out there profile bits and all sorts, liner bits, whatever you suit. These come in different degrees. 10s, 15s, 20s and 30s. There's a 60 out there. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. That's just the angle of the tip on the end there. There we go. And what we're going to do, we're going to pop that into a, an adapter collet. 6.35 millimetre. Because your CNC bit is a 3.175 millimetre. That will fit a Dremel, no problem, if you want to use the Dremel rotor attachment. So obviously you won't need that. But as we are using a quarter inch router today, you literally just slide that in there into the silver end. That now has a quarter inch or 6 point, 6, 1.35 millimeter shaft on it. And that will fit your router, no problem. And the idea is we're going to go around all the lines. We're going to do inset lettering, which means we're going to go inside the letters. And always route up to the line. Never just go around on the line. If you've got something small like this corner here, or imagine that one there, you go around there, and even though it's only three millimetres wide, you must be down a good millimetre. So you've took a millimetre there, millimetre there. You're going to alter the thickness of that piece here, if that makes sense. So inset lettering, route up to the line. If you're doing outset, which would be removing all the background and leaving these letters to stand up, you would route up to the line. So inset up to, outset up to. Never on the line on these kind of projects anyway. So we literally go around it all with that. Some of these are quite small. I mean, one of these I'll actually do with the CNC bit. You could do the full project just with that one piece. It's obviously going to take you a little while. So we've gone around all the lines, remember, with our CNC bit. We'll just slide that out. And we're starting one of these end milling bits. They come in different sizes. We'll get one that's not too big. Obviously we can fit in here 
and get up to these edges without interfering. Remember, we've done either side of that with the CNC bit. So as we come up with this, that will come out really easy and hopefully leave a nice crisp line all the way around. We will be going around with a Dremel and a little engraving bit just to tidy up afterwards. So we'll just pop that in there, up to that plastic barrier. I've had these without the barrier on, so don't be concerned if you can't find them. eBay or Amazon, they're exactly the same, but some come with these plastic stoppers on, some don't. So I'll just push it up to that. We'll set it to the same depth as the CNC bit, and then we'll remove all the inside lettering on this one. Just be careful when you do your hours, don't come in and start doing that, so you'll either want to shade around it, or shade that centerpiece, just so you leave it there. But I'll be fine on a little project like this. Same on the letter O as well. We don't want to come in and start routing that out. So just be careful. Remember, we just want to remove that section there and that section there, leaving those center pieces. Same on all of them. So just take your time. If you want to go around and just mark off the bits you want to remove, and you'll know you'll leave those bits behind. Okay. So let's pop our CNC bit in. We'll set it to about three millimeters on this. It might be a little bit deep for what we want today, but most of my projects are three millimeters. I just made myself a little gauge like that. And three millimeters is literally the thickness as one of your CNC bits. 3.175 millimeter is near enough for me at three. I made one there at four. You could do one at five, six, seven, as deep as you want. You could also purchase a ready-made depth gauge if you preferred that. Okay. Nice quick one today, like I say, once it's all routed out and cleaned out, we'll throw some black paint on there, sand it down quickly, bit of linseed oil, bit of spray, and then we'll pop it on the shed, and that will be the shed finished. Okay, stay with me on this one, it's going to be the last one for the shed. Let's start routing this one out. Right, you can see from that we've gone around all our lines. It's just coming in a little bit dark now, so I do apologise if the lighting is not perfect. I basically film everything from my mobile phone. Now you can see from that letter there, we just removed that all with the CNC bit. So you could do this full project with a CNC bit. And we also took out a couple of letters there. And it's still rough and ready, remember? We're going to go around and tidy this up with an engraving bit. There we go, on a router. So don't worry about that. Just the last, last project to go on my shed. Right, we did mention the end milling bits. I've used these on 90% of my projects. Fantastic little kits. You get a pack of 10 or so like that. And just pick one that's going to fit. I believe this green one here. We know that's just going to fit in there nicely to remove the rest of these letters a little bit quicker. There's no race and there's no rush. Just take your time and enjoy yourself more than anything. It's the way I look at things anyway. So we know that that fits inside all those letters. So it's just a simple case of removing the CNC bit. We'll get a lot more projects out of that, that's for sure. We'll slot that in there like so, up to that little barrier. We'll pop that in the router and we'll set it to the same depth. It's one of those letters there, or one of those numbers, 
or you could use your gauge thing again your piece of wood that we used earlier in the video and we're literally just going to remove the remainder of the inset or the inside of these letters we'll do that next Right, you can see from that we've done all the clear out with those n milling bits, should I say, and you can just about see the pencil lines on there once it's focused in. There it is. So remember, just route up to the line and up to the line inside the whole section. Inset lettering memory on this one. Lettering is not one of my favourite things to do. Some people are fantastic at it. It's just not. Just not my cup of tea, but we'll get a little plaque out of it. Remember, it's just going to be on the end of the shed, the front of the shed, should I say. I mean, if you look there, them two ones, the 11th, that's terrible. But we'll <laughs> we'll salvage something from that. Just give it a go. Don't be concerned what people think about it. I certainly don't. It's got no issue to me. Just fun, fun projects and just enjoy what you do. OK, we've done the CNC bit. We've done the end milling bits. We've cleaned it out nicely. Now I like to use some Dremel engraving bits and I have mine on the end of one of these flexi cables that literally just attaches to the Dremel or a rotary tool at the other end. I cannot recommend one of them enough. They're just a nice pen size and on the end we put in an engraving bit. If you search Dremel engraving bits on eBay or Amazon you'll get a packet of 30 of these for next to nothing. And they've all got different heads on, as you can see there. I like to get one with a nice flat bottom head, like we've got in there now. And we're just going to turn this on, and we'll go inside and give it a general tidy up like so. Doesn't need a lot of it. Just get rid of those little fluffy bits that are hanging about. And then a bit of good old standard sandpaper. Give it a little clean inside like so. And then we'll be on to the painting side of things. Okay, we'll clean it out now with the... Right, that's enough sanding down for me. Clean enough for what we want for this little project just to go on the side of this shed. Now paint wise, just nice painters touching me today. This is a great paint for outdoor projects and stuff. Now on certain woods, for those that's new, you can purchase a separate wood sealer. Basically like a liquid that you brush inside the routed out areas what that will do will seal the side walls of the section that you've just removed with your router. Only on certain woods. On my fencing projects, I never bother with any kind of sealer. Sometimes you just put a thin spray of lacquer on just to stop the paint from bleeding into those side walls. So when you come to sand it down again, you'll still get a nice crisp line instead of seeing the paint in the side sections. If you imagine this wood being like a load of straws put together, and we've cut into the straws, the grain basically, and we've opened up those straws in the side wall. So when you put your paint in, it will bleed into those. Personally myself, I've never used sanding sealer on any of my projects. I sprayed the odd one with a bit of varnish beforehand. Apart from that, I've really had no issues. So I guess it depends on what kind of wood you're using. Definitely don't need it on fencing wood. I've never used it. And acrylic paints, I've no problem. I also brush my paints in, a lot of the other guys they like to spray theirs so it's entirely up to you, you could mask this off and spray it or literally just spray the full piece black. But like I say I'm just going to use painter's touch and brush it straight in, no messing about, it doesn't matter how rough it is, we can just throw that in there like so. I like to find once it's dried I tend to go over it again just to make sure we've got any bits that we've uh, missed on the previous paint. 
Also, with it being black, if you do find the old speckle, you imagine something in there, like you just about see that speckle in there. You can get a Sharpie pen, a black marker pen, just dab that in there afterwards. So I'll finish this off. We'll paint all this, like we say. Just throw it in. We don't have to be overly concerned. It takes literally minutes to do all that. And then we'll give it a nice sanding over. A little mouth sander for me. We'll skim all over that. And hopefully all the lettering should be nice and crisp. And we've not had any bleeding into those side walls. Okay, I'll come back when this is all painted, been sanded over, and then we'll be down for putting our boiled linseed oil on for me, and then a nice bit of spray just to give it a little bit of shine. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Like I said previously, it's just a simple plaque just to finish the final date of the 18th of the 11th, 21, that we actually finished all the shed projects that's gone onto the front of my little shed stroke workspace. And that's it. It's done. You notice there we put on some boiled linseed. That's just to darken that wood down and give it a little bit more protection. And we finished it off with three or four coats of paint factory glass gloss varnish i've started using that on a lot of my projects now i'm quite happy with that and it just gives it a nice lovely shine you can see from there and a little bit more protection with it going outside now it won't be the best best one for outside i must admit but like i say for my little shed i've certainly no problem with it and that's it we're done the lettering's fine i'm not impressed with those numbers there and for the last one to go on this shed, it must have been time to move on for something else. We'll obviously still be doing different projects, they just won't be for this shed. So just a quick thank you for everybody that's followed me on this little journey. I did set myself a mission, shall I call it, to finish before the end of the year. And we've more or less finished on the 18th of November, so we had a little time to spare. And obviously I've been doing different projects in between. And that's it, this shed is complete. So my work here is definitely done, as regards to the shed anyway. So there it is, it's on decking wood, this one, remember. It measures in at 12 inches by 4 inches. We use CNC bits to do our lines, end milling bits to remove all the inside of the lettering. Then we put on the black painter's touch paint, give it a quick sanding down, boiled linseed oil, and then some nice gloss varnish to finish it off with. And that's it. This little project is finished. So we'll put it on the shed. We've got a little space left for it. And the shed is complete. And my work here is done. Thank you very much for watching.